Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com. And in a previous video, I demonstrated how to make these amazing hamburger brioche buns. But I got a lot of questions regarding how can I make these buns if I want to knead the dough by hand, if I don't have a KitchenAid-style mixer. Now, the first step for making this dough by hand is you need to scald the milk. So you're going to place the milk over medium-high heat, bring it up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or above, stirring occasionally, and then cooling off. Now, this is going to deactivate the whey protein in the milk, which can hinder gluten development. And this is an important step when kneading by hand. Pour the scalding milk into a mixing bowl. And if you want to speed up the cooling process, you can just place this over another bowl with ice in it and give it a whisk. Uh, it'll take about 45 to 60 seconds for it to cool down. And you're looking for it to cool down to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's still a little bit warm. Now we're going to place our instant yeast into the milk and whisk to dissolve. Now this is because when kneading by hand, it's sometimes hard to incorporate the yeast fully into the dough because you don't have the same power or force that a dough hook attachment and a KitchenAid mixer does. Next, I'm going to whisk in my two eggs, creating my milk and egg mixture as just as we did in our previous video. So the only difference at this point is we've heated our milk, we've scalded it, and then we've dissolved the yeast into our milk. Now I'm going to place the flour into my milk and egg mixture. I'm going to stir it together using a plastic bench scraper. And all I'm trying to do here is just get a cohesive shaggy piece of dough. I'm not kneading it at this point. I'm just making sure there's no dry flour visible. And this is a step to allow the gluten structure to fully hydrate before we knead it. So I'm just going to cover with plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature for 30 minutes. Now, after the 30-minute rest, the gluten strands are going to be fully hydrated. It's going to make it a lot more easy for me to develop the gluten by kneading. Now next we have to add in our sugar and salt and we've waited until now because both sugar and salt can hinder gluten development as well as butter. So I folded the sugar and salt into the dough and now I'm adding my room temperature butter right on top and you can see that it's actually pretty warm in my kitchen right now so the room temperature butter is fairly melty and if it was a little less melted it would be even easier to incorporate into the dough. But this will show you that even when it's a mess like this, you can still get the dough to incorporate nicely. So I'm just almost chopping the butter into the dough and then pressing it in with my hands. And anytime that dough and that butter gets away from me, I'm just scraping it back into the center. So you can see I have butter all over my work surface and all over my hands. But we're going to tame this dough here in a second just by scraping it back in. Now, once I've pressed that butter into the dough, it's still kind of this shaggy, messy sort of dough structure. I'm now going to use a technique called frissage. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the heel of my hand to press the dough out and away on my work surface and this is going to help us blend the ingredients so after i press it out and away i'm going to scrape that dough back into a center mass and then i'm going to continue i'm going to continue pressing out and away with the heel of my hand and creating this pasty dough on my work surface again it's going to fully incorporate my butter salt and sugar evenly into my dough mixture which again this technique is really important when doing this by hand because you don't have the power of a KitchenAid mixer. Now look at my dough at this point. I've been doing the frissage technique for about two to three minutes and you can see that it's really kind of cohesive. Even though I'm pressing it away from itself, it's really cohesive and it looks evenly blended. Now check this out when I scrape the dough back in towards me. You see how it sticks together and it's almost bouncy? That's a good sign. That's showing us that our gluten development has already begun. Now at this point, the ingredients are fully blended into my dough from using the frissage technique. So I'm going to finish off my kneading by using a simple slap and fold. And the movement for this is just picking up the dough, slapping it down, folding it over, doing a quarter turn and repeating. So slap, fold, quarter turn, repeat. Slap, fold, quarter turn, repeat. And this is allowing me to knead a somewhat loose dough. I mean, this is a pretty rich dough. So this is allowing me to knead this and develop gluten structure. And so I'm going to be doing this for about eight minutes. But the time isn't important. You want to continue to do this slap and fold until you have a proper gluten development. And how do you know? Well, you do the window pane test. So I'm going to cut off just a small portion of the dough I'm going to stretch it into a thin membrane. If I can stretch it so thin that I can see light shine through it, then I know I'm ready to go. Now look at how bouncy this dough is. When I pull it back and forth, you can actually see the springiness in the dough. It's very elastic. So that's showing us that we have an awesome gluten development. And this came 
from us first heating our milk or scalding it and then using the frissage technique for blending and then the hand kneading technique of slap and fold. Now at this point, I'm simply going to round the dough and then place it into a container for proofing. And you're going to proof for one hour at room temperature and then place in the refrigerator. Now at this point, you're gonna go ahead and just follow the instructions in our previous brioche bun video. Now for more information, you can click on the thumbnail video left and watch the full hamburger brioche bun video. Or if you click the thumbnail on video right, it'll drop you into that same hamburger brioche bun video, but at 451 into that video. So it's going to drop you in right where this video left off. Now for a few different scalable recipes and a lot more information, head on over to stellaculinary.com slash hamburger bun where this episode's show notes can be found.